Hey, wonderful people. Good morning and happy Friday. Good morning and Good happy, morning. happy Friday. Welcome to the studio again. This is the Inside Show Eames. with I D E M S Edems and Omar. Oh mm. <laughs> it's been a long time I said my name, but again, it's Friday. I know I said it yesterday, but calm down. It's the whole 24 hours thing. You know how this thing be, Shar. It's how just would it be? You should just be leaving in the studio. Yeah. Hey, my people, I found a day where I did come on to. See, this is just like I'm back. But well, welcome again yeah. to another beautiful Friday. And we hope that uh, you've had a wonderful week so far. Mm-hmm. And as Monday has come and gone, it's been amazing. Tuesday, been amazing. When is the Omar? How's it? When is it going? really good god has been faithful awesome awesome and then we consider yesterday thursday and today friday so welcome to another edition of ordinary people extraordinary Extra god. god yes and to be honest we don't have just an ordinary person here today mm-hmm. so we, really? we have <laughs> we have one of us in the studio so i know we, we know you're listening to spot it's please. a privilege, you, <laughs> it's know a privilege. <laughs> you know you know when those people how they do like i, I don't know where but it was like Mm-hmm. Go ahead. <laughs> it's a privilege to have our one of us, our brother, our brother. You know, in ministry, what they used to do? You know, say uh-huh. we're privileged to be to have him honor our invitation. Thank you, you know, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> but friends, we have chicks in the building. It's it's a collaboration mm. between Spots Please yes. and the Inside Show, mm. and we can't wait to you know just hear. Here, I mean, chicks is always talking about sports, football, mm. tennis, all those blessed things. So today we want to get the the spiritual side from our brother. One no, one no choose. <laughs> one no choose. <laughs> one no choose. <laughs> oh. Welcome, chicks. Thank you welcome, for to the studio. Yes, welcome to the inside show. Thank you so much. Welcome, welcome, welcome. It's a privilege to have you here. You guys you. introduced me like I'm the FIFA president. So. Ah yes, yes, yes. yes. He wants to sign some checks. It makes me feel so important this morning. <laughs> But it's good to be on the inside show. It's uh, it's wonderful. That uh, should I call it hybrid now, crossbreed. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm so, saying? Don't uh, leave me. It's <laughs> a good one. Thanks for having me. Thank and you. friends, thank you again for tuning into today's show. Yeah, um, before yeah. we start our conversation with Chicks, very quickly we want to go on our first music break, yeah. and the song you've been listening to is one of Chicks' favorite, mm-hmm. and it's by Kavam's Ordinary People. Please enjoy the song, and we'll catch you right after the music break. Welcome back to the studios and welcome back to the Inside Show. Yeah. The song you're just listening to that was Cobams and Ordinary People. Because. And we still we have a wonderful guest in the studio, one of our co uh, OAP right yeah. here on the Covenant Radio Chooks. If you know him, you know him. Is the guy, the voice behind uh, Spot, please. Spot, please. Welcome to the show. And again, remember that you can follow us on all of our social media platforms on Facebook and also on Instagram. It's at The Covenant Radio. Remember on X, it's at My Covenant, Covenant radio. radio. Remember that you can send us an email, radio at thecovenantnation.org. You know, Omar <laughs> and I, were thrilled to be in the studio today. Yeah. And we don't take your audience or we don't take your attention for granted. You know, like we always say, you can be doing a thousand, ten thousand, <laughs> one billion. You know, just doing a couple of things. You might yeah. not be in, in two thousand, but, but you've taken time to listen to us and also share, allow us into your space. So we are very, very grateful for that. Thank All you. Right. So, Chooks. Chooks, Chooks, Chooks. Mm-hmm. I'm well, it now. Chooks, Chooks, Chooks. So, Chooks. As please, a sports guy, get us some, to picture this. Get us the barbecue group, please. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, Chicks, picture this. Yeah. You get to coach 11 people mm-hmm. from the Bible oh. to play in a major league. Mm. Who would your 11 people be? Mm. Very interesting question. Um, But also very tough because there are a lot of characters to pick from. <laughs> But mm, in mm. no particular order, I would have said, let me start from the goalkeeper to mm. uh, the striker. Mm. But in no particular order, I will go with David. Mm. 
I'll choose David. Maybe David as a striker or midfielder. Mm. I don't know yet, but let me look at that. <laughs> yes, but David, David has to be there. <laughs> obviously, he was a good warrior. He mm-hmm. was a strong. He yeah. was fit. And uh, of course, you need fit people yeah. uh, in on the field of play. So I'll mm-hmm. go with David. Mm-hmm. Uh, yes, I'll go with David. I'll also go with Saul because mm. at the time, it was said that he was the tallest man in all of mm. Israel. Yeah. So maybe Saul as a defender, you know, to clear those loose balls. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, Impenetrable defense. Yes. So uh, Saul, I'll, I'll also go with Saul. Um, so that's two people now. Remaining nine, mm. I will go with Samson. Mm. Mm. Samson, yeah, strong, strong man. Guy, mm. right? oh, yeah, you need someone mm. who can also have that endurance <laughs> to last. So uh, Samson is an easy pick for me. I go <laughs> Samson, but uh, I just hope he won't be looking at women on the stand. So he won't get confused or stuff like <laughs> get that. Us, get <laughs> Oh yeah, that's true. That's something to actually consider. So, so yeah, Samson is good. Um, I won't go with Solomon. Solomon was a sport guy. Mm. Um, he, you know, he was always indoors. He didn't fight any war. Bench, so he, bench, bench. Nah. Or maybe ball boy. Like, no, 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 bench. Was ball boy. Maybe, maybe, maybe coach mm. with his wisdom. He was well Yeah, yeah. Don't leave me, don't leave me, don't leave me. Check me out. Check me out. Technical advice, though, but not on the field of play. We need serious-minded people. Solomon, don't worry. We'll see you in heaven. Solomon was so much of a womanizer. His career won't last if he's a football. Bola, but as a coach, I think he'll do well. He'll do well. So that's uh, three players now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Three players minus yeah. the coach. Uh, who else would I go with? Um, I'm looking for all the warriors in the Bible. I'll go with Gideon. Mm. Yeah, Gideon. He wasn't sure of himself in the beginning, <laughs> yeah. but he became a mighty warrior. I mean, if yeah. God calls you a mighty warrior, you're a mighty <laughs> warrior. Yeah. So I think I'll go with Gideon as well. Okay. Uh, that's four. Yeah. Mm. Uh, who else would I go with? Hmm, very tough. Mm. I know it's mostly Old Testament characters okay. because, mm. you know, the New Testament, they're all <laughs> in the spirit and, <laughs> and all that. But um, whew, I'll go with Paul. Mm. Why? Endurance for the things he endured. Mm. You also need stamina on the field of play. You stamina. <laughs> yes. kick so. your leg up and down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, he was killed, he was swan, he was stoned, he was attacked, but he but still he went stayed. on. So, you know, on the field of play too, you get bruises, you get hit, but you still stand up and play. And Paul did that very well. Yeah. So, um, how many have I mentioned now? So, five. That's five. 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 Uh, six to go. Ah, mm-hmm. uh, mm-hmm. who else am I going with now? Who else am I going with? Mm-hmm. How about Joseph Hart? Jo- Joseph Hart. Mm. Mm. Bench. Bench. Mm. Bench. Bench. <laughs> Jacob. Yes. Jacob bench fought character. a whole angel. Jacob, yeah. Yes. Mm. Jacob fought an angel and he lived. Mm. Hey. Uh, that's true. <laughs> Jacob, yeah. A good one. I'll go with Jacob as well. That's six. That's Jacob. six. Um, Five um, more to go. Five more. Five more to go. Who, mm. who else? Who else? Who else? Who else? Who else? Who else? Who Maybe else? we should help you look for the men that were with with uh, that fought with David. Hey, one of yes. the good guys. Yep. Was it Joab? Now was it was it yeah. Joab? Yeah. I'll, yeah. I'll go with one of the mighty men. Mm-hmm. I'll go mm-hmm. Joab. I also go to Zaid, the one he, he unfortunately killed. You know, oh. uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. But uh, those guys were his mighty men. <laughs> yeah. Those guys were his mighty yeah. men. Yeah. I need them. So that's Joab. That's Uza. I should be on eight now or something like that. Yes. Seven or eight. Mm-hmm. You know. Mm-hmm. Um, so we're on five before. So you mentioned two now, seven. Seven. So we have four more to go. Four more to go. Okay. Um, who else should I go? Let, let me look for a New Testament character. I've mentioned Paul. Who else would I use? No, yeah, John. John was always dressed in on Jesus' bosom. So <laughs> I need someone, you know, <laughs> someone. Was, Peter. Go, uh, Peter, Peter. Yeah. Let me first go with James and John. Mm. Uh, they said they're like sons of thunder. Sons of thunder. You know, mm. And they mm. look like very bright band people. Nah, so. They look like strikers. Yeah, like yeah. Those guys strikers, that's like good. Like strikers. Top strikers, you know, four quarter <laughs> formation. Sons James and John thunder. up front. And the other guys, you know, helping them with that. Uh, yeah. So that's 10. That's there, one more. Yeah. Obviously, I'll go with Jesus. Mm. Jesus will be a defender, you know, defending everything. <laughs> Once Jesus is at the back, post, nothing, you know, our, he's clearing everything. Immune, we are immune to any goal. We are telling <laughs> you. He's the defender of our faith. So, uh, nothing. Nothing is nothing for you. So, I think that's a good 11. Amazing. Good. Amazing start with, with, with Solomon and Joseph as the technical advisors and coach. Because oh, Joseph for his strategic come on, wisdom. Come on, come on, come on, come that's come a good on, one. Plus, I know what I'm doing. Really I'm telling good. you, if you have this winning squad, if you have this winning score, nothing. 72, 72 nil. That's, mm. that's how the score line will be. It'll be like a basketball game. <laughs> record history, history record. All of the joy. <laughs> amazing stuff. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you yeah. for sharing. And uh, amazing stuff. I'm just imagine that if you come across this video, Hey. It'd be like that. Uh, you have to be ready. To sometimes I wonder how they looked. You know, I try to picture yeah. man. I wonder how they looked sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I know, I know something had beards. <laughs> Jesus most likely had beards, was from Nazareth. So, mm-hmm. you know. yeah, they, they the kept guys. beards. Yeah. And long hair. Yeah. You know. <laughs> so, so I'm on track a bit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> although some some people said we don't know if it was you know if Jesus was black, if the complexion was was fair, mm. was white. You know, some people say let's not trouble the image of Jesus that yes. we have yes. when we. When we get to heaven, we we'll see. Exactly. We we'll see. We we'll see. He we'll won't look like what he was on earth. So. He won't look like yeah. God. We we'll just see him. See him. All right. So, so I have, um, a, you know, a couple of questions in terms of, you know, how you grew up spiritually. Yeah. At what point for you did you decide within your faith or yourself that this is Jesus mm-hmm. and this relationship is probably worth going after, and mm-hmm. I want to just go after. At what point in your life? You know, and what you know, what what were the things that happened to you know that led you to make that decision? Yeah, um, good question, but can be somehow tough for me, mm. you know, because I grew up in a Christian home, mm. you know, typical Christian home. Even before I came of age, like they say, my yeah. dad was from an Anglican family, my mom was from a Catholic family, wow. but um, you know, we I think from '97 or so, mm-hmm. we grew up, we went, we, you know, became Pentecostals, yeah. and actually went to Christian secondary school as well. Wow. So, you know, whatever, In the blood. <laughs> whatever, whatever Christian activity, we never missed anyone. It was compulsory. It was mandatory. You couldn't yeah, miss it. Yeah. You'd be punished if you did. Yeah. You know, so I think. I would say for a lot of us who grew up in Christian homes, Mm -hmm. it's kind of expected we'll Mm -hmm. be Christians and all that. But I would say when I was in SS1, we used to do some like drama plays in school. Mm -hmm. It was something like all these Mount Zion films. I think SS1, yes. So I think the first time it really dawned on me that if you don't do this, you will go to hell. was almost what the drama was about. Mm. Uh, I would say that was the first time I sort of you know gave my life to christ mm. you get but for me you know most people say okay this was the day i gave my life to christ mm-hmm. i can't tell you this was the day mm-hmm. it was just you know growing in knowledge mm. but that was one moment i would look at it and say okay yes okay i you know i came to an awareness of you know wanting to take my christian life serious but even at that we still I mean, we still guys we still did some things we made yeah. mistakes mm-hmm. here and there mm-hmm. but also i'll say for me one of the defining moments was when i in Anambra then when I was still in Anambra Oka to be precise mm. so I had some friends who always tell me that oh you know what come to this church that's where the fine girls are <laughs> I'm exposing myself now so I was going to a church then uh, a church before and then they were always hyping this church like there were fine girls in this church there were fine girls in this church come see fine girls now you know that kind of thing I know yeah. I'm young, not so bad looking guy myself let me, <laughs> let me go and, and see for myself and I went to the church, mm-hmm. Dominion City. I can mention him because it's a good thing. Mm-hmm. I went to Dominion City. I'll never forget the pastor. We still talk on Facebook. Mm-hmm. And that was the first time that the pastor would preach. And I would go back home mm-hmm. to revise what was being preached. Mm-hmm. Wow. It had never happened before. Mm-hmm. Never. So he preached. I can't remember exactly what it was about. But I went back home, opened my Bible to, rever- to mm-hmm. revise. Yeah. I'd never done it before. And then while I was opening, when I was reading my Bible, I was like... You're actually reading Bible after service. Mm. Yeah, I was in my, I think, late teens, maybe 20 or so then. And it dawned on me, like, there's more to, you know, this church going. Yeah. Mm. That, you know, you just go to church, you come back, you say your prayers and all mm-hmm. that. There's more to it. There's also an intellectual side to it. There's yeah. also a deep spiritual side to it. Yeah. And I think that was what, you know, started, I would say that was the moment where I started yearning for the word of God. I started, mm. you know, seeking out knowledge on the things of God. Yeah. And it's funny how it works. I went there to look for fine girls and, you know, God caught me. <laughs> what a reason to go to church. But hey, God can use anything. You know? So that's the moment. And I, you know, even occasionally, I, I remember on his birthday, the pastor's birthday, two years ago, so I had to post it on Facebook and tell him, sir, he didn't know the full story, but I had mm. to let him know this was what happened. Mm. And um, you know your instrumental. Wow, I like that so wow. Wow. That's wonderful. And you know, just to think about it, that you went with another motive, <laughs> and then you left the church. Yeah. With another, with a seed yeah. in, in your heart. Yes. And that just, just, just. So, and can I say a very funny prayer? Dear Lord, mm. any any fine boy that comes to church for a fine girl, mm. block it right now. No, 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 Oh, no, no, they no, had no. motive, but hey, we, we have an amazing God that can do anything. Can, yes. can come for, Don't limit for God. The yes. <laughs> you know, because if God had blocked him now, you that seed would have been sown. You get it right? Okay, you're right. You I, I, get it, I get you it. Get it. Yeah. You know, you know, I, you know why, why we why we love God yeah. and why we enjoy His His presence 
a lot of time <laughs> because some of the times it might not even be that we're even going for maybe a female it might mm-hmm. just be for something maybe yeah. you just maybe went to a location or you followed the <laughs> friend to a party yeah. and that's when you know you meet a connection or you even meet another lady your yeah. spouse or, or just it's something true. god it's has true. a way of directing our footsteps um, yeah. to yeah. to the right place <laughs> at the right time because he says hey I know what's coming, you know, what's what's coming for you in the next coming of years, days. This is important state's right place in your mind right now that you need to be. And God has a way of just planting us in the right place and sending people our way. The yeah. pastor didn't, <laughs> I'm sure the pastor didn't know you were coming. Or yeah. Like in a way, knew that, oh, yeah. Chicks was coming. Let me prepare a message yeah. for you. So I'll tie him down, you know. <laughs> you know, and, and God just had a way of me. speaking yeah. through him yeah. to get to you. <laughs> and you know amazing stuff so wherever you are listening to us today just know that you know god is around you just like the bible says in the book of psalms where david was saying where will i go and i won't find your love where i go to the heavens where i go to the earth the water you're always there with me and that's god's word for you fun checks to you today whatever you are doing <laughs> god is there with you and he's always ahead of you he's behind you he's by your side just don't give up on him Amen, amen, amen. May God keep ordering our steps. Mm. So, Jokes, as a believer, one of the things that helps us to stay sharp is the Word of God. <coughs> and I love that you alluded to, to that when you're sharing your testimony. So, what would you say is one scripture that has, you know, helped you stay anchored? Like, your, you know, your go-to scripture when you're facing trials. And also, if you can, please share with us how that scripture has helped you, you know, in a difficult time in yeah. life. I think that one is easy. I, I won't say it's a particular scripture, but I'll say it's a whole chapter. Mm. And that's Psalms 34. Mm. Um, there are many verses there, but the whole chapter, it's for anybody, I, I, and I'll just put it out there, for anybody who is going through trials, just read the whole chapter and personalize it. Mm. Mm. And, you know, like Pastor tells us, you know, recite it, personalize it, speak it out, even when you're feeling down. And before yeah. you know it, you'll find relief. Really, uh, I'm exposing myself again, <laughs> but I, I came through the scripture. I think God revealed it to me through what seemed like a heartbreak. Mm. <laughs> I, I knew it had to be the lady that would clear her throat. No, no, no. I knew. I said, I said, I said, she needs water. Please. She needs water. Pretty it's not nice. what you said, though. It's just she needs water. <laughs> I knew, I, knew, I knew you'd be the leader that would you know, but that's what you people do sometimes. Mm. Give me seven breakfast. Seven breakfast. Seven breakfast. From City Park to Yeah, so. From Eve's seven, you seven breakfast. You get From that denial to even say that, you know, it's okay. So it's okay. Let's have it. We can have, we have, we have it. Let's have it. <laughs> so it was, I won't say, it wasn't a bad moment for me. It wasn't like I was sobbing or crying, mm-hmm. but I mean, hey heartbreak is heartbreak yeah, even heartbreak. though you deal with it well but it's still mm-hmm. heartbreak ah it's hard and i was just it's praying painful. at least you know, just god just grant me clarity and yeah. somehow psalms 34 just came mm. uh, I, that's what they call rema at the end of the day because yeah. sometimes mm-hmm. you're wondering what's rema but then when he speaks to you directly mm-hmm. that's mm-hmm. definitely what rema is so that's psalms 34 but some particular verses is mm-hmm. uh seven he said the angel of the lord encamps around those who fear him and delivers them mm-hmm. there's psalms 34 10 he says the young lions slack or suffer hunger but those who trust the lord won't lack any good thing mm-hmm. there's of course 22 which i usually recite said um uh, it talks about condemnation that those who trust in Lord will not be condemned. Mm-hmm. You know, yes, and also, I think it's eighteen it talks about the broken-hearted and contrite spirits. Mm. So I think that one touched me as well. So sometimes you're feeling overwhelmed, and I just say, you know, those who put their faith in God, their trust in God, cannot be condemned. Yeah. You know, sometimes you're wondering, as a human being, like, God, are you there? God, are you going to let your name in my life be ashamed? No, but. It then you always recite it and that's yeah. one thing i do i speak it out loud when you mm. speak it out loud repeatedly it negates those things and also sometimes when you know in times past where you're, you're dealing from some form of lack not that you're broke or anything but sometimes you're just like this thing i want to get is not there but you remember young lions may lack and suffer hunger but if you trust god he cannot deny you of any good thing yeah. Yeah. may not be what you want at that time but it will always be what you need mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and then also when you're feeling overwhelmed maybe it feels like there's some presence in your life that you don't want the angel of the lord and comes around those who mm-hmm. fear him and he delivers them 102 percent of the time okay. so psalm 34 for me the whole chapter is just uh, you know it's just a, 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 a rema chapter for me mm-hmm. and i think that's that speaks to me every time i always go back to it oh. well that's so good i mean like i have my bible open up here so mm-hmm. i was 34 
And in verse 18, it says, The Lord is close to the brokenhearted, and he rescues those whose spirits are crushed. In verse 17, it says, The Lord hears his people when they call to him for help, <clears throat> and he rescues them from all their troubles. And so, friends, like Chuk said, and even like as the word of God, you know, also says, um, if you're heartbroken, not just by in their life people now, but maybe just heartbroken by um, any tough situation, the Lord is with you. He's yeah. near. He would rescue you. All you need to do is to call to Him. Yeah, absolutely, to him. absolutely. And and you know, it's you know, I I love one of the things that He mentioned um, earlier, and just to reemphasize that is about speaking to situations you mentioned that through the scripture mm. always speak and you know um pastor Poji as always uh reemphasizes the 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 power of the spoken word right your inner ear also gets to hear what you are saying yeah and most of the time when the enemy wants to um wants to get something into your thoughts or mm. wants to get something into your life it first attacks your thoughts mm-hmm. and it begins to you know just allows those thoughts to just come and if you don't speak back to it those thoughts just they form a process and yeah. eventually become an event in your life but the moment you begin to um think anything negative or maybe you out of the blue you're just thinking about maybe your your parents you're just thinking about ah maybe i'm going to i'm going to get to a place of scarcity or want maybe mm. in the next five years and you're thinking i'm here i'm thinking of five years i'm not yeah. gonna have again no there's something going on like he mentioned spiritually and what you need to do is like he speak. mentioned speak directly it might not make sense to you but speak the word of god against it for it in that situation and you know i'm telling you if you, if you have a very very meticulous reason of you know brain in the next five years you will remember yeah, yeah. <laughs> i'm telling you yes. you remember that yeah. ah i said something <laughs> and you know maybe something happens in the next five years and you just know you know that ah yeah it was some spoken word yes it was enacted yeah. five years ago it's all right man so friends we have to go on our next music break mm. and the song you're listening to is by naomi rain and she's singing the story i'll tell we'll catch you right after the music break Welcome back. That was Naomi Rain. And that was story. A story I'll, I'll tell. tell. Oh, what story are you telling scary. today? Welcome back. Feels to like Omar is about to sing the song. <laughs> the spirit already. Okay, there's a mic in front of you. <laughs> You know, I'm, I'm, I'm considering. I was considering putting you in my EP. No, you're but... embarrassing. Jake is going to sing, so oh, I, 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 I want to have that voice. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I'm gonna, voice. I'm gonna put him on. Yeah, I'm sing. <laughs> Oh, but I absolutely love that song by Naomi Rain. The, mm-hmm. the lyrics hit the It's yeah. a beautiful yeah. song. Yeah. It's a beautiful song. song of God's faithfulness. Song. And friends, you are still listening to Ordinary People, Extraordinary God, absolutely. you know, today's um, Inside Show. Mm-hmm. Um, and we are so glad to, you know, still have you here listening to us and following through us. So, wonderful 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 stuff we are very very excited yeah. Chicks has been amazing in the studio yes so <laughs> he has been sharing some deep thoughts and deep uh deep deep encounters with us and also sharing his life journey i mean that's what the show is all about mm-hmm. really right just all of us sharing our stories because you, we never know that person that will be blessed and encouraged because most of the time you know the bible says how good and pleasant it is when brothers gather together. together in unity that gathering is very very important because iron sharp iron yeah. mm-hmm. where i don't fall and i share my experience <laughs> of my fallings and my you know my errors you get to learn and just know that okay where i have experienced love beyond imagination i also get to share that with you and then you also know that god truly it's on the throne and he watches over his children fact so tricks how do you um manage distractions because i mean as a believer it's very easy for us to be distracted mm, yeah. so so what is maybe like a few practice that you do to stay anchored very in true. god you already talked about reading the word so mm. what are other things you do to stay anchored in god mm, uh, it's a it's an interesting question 
because I'll say sometimes the very things that help us also distract us. Mm-hmm. And I'm okay. talking about technology, mm. right? It's so easy to get distracted. I don't think there's anybody who doesn't deal with that distraction. Oh, yeah. Oh, anybody yeah. who is disciplined with, say, their phone, for instance, is mm-hmm. someone who has, you know, worked at it. It doesn't just come. Mm-hmm. And I'm saying that because one of the things that help me with distraction, apart from reading the word, is mm-hmm. hearing messages, mm-hmm. godly messages. Yeah. Mm-hmm. As something, uh, in fact, I would say that's something that has changed my life. It was 2013 or so. I came across a post on Facebook about some pastors and how to get their free messages. And I just yeah. started downloading. Mm-hmm. I think I think that's the time I started listening to messages actively. Mm-hmm. And over the years, I noticed that there are some things I was struggling with that just went like that. Mm-hmm. And I was trying to trace back and say, okay, how exactly did it go? It wasn't particularly prayer. Yeah. And I told myself it must be those words that I was listening to. Okay, mm-hmm. okay. Sometimes absent-mindedly. Mm-hmm. I could be listening to it and fall asleep. I could be listening to it while I'm washing. Mm-hmm. And sometimes I'm not even paying attention to the word where it's entering. It's entering mm-hmm. You know, so I would say that's one thing that helps me. Mm-hmm. In fact, that's the one thing that helps me. And typically, um, I have free YouTube from 12 to 6. Mm-hmm. That's midnight hours. So mm-hmm. I usually wake up listening to a message on Facebook, mm-hmm. you know, by some pastors, some, you know, if it's, of course, Pastor Poju, mm-hmm. uh, Apostle Selman, mm-hmm. um, uh, Dr. David Ogwele, mm-hmm. and, uh, you know, just a couple of them, a core of them, um, Apostle Arumi Osai as well. Mm-hmm. So sometimes I wake up and, you know, the algorithm already shows me the things I've been listening to. <laughs> so I just go, I watch those videos on YouTube. That's how I start my day. Mm-hmm. After I say a few words of prayer, I watch it and the core prayer of that day is what I've watched mm. that forms what I pray about that day. Yeah. So that's what help, helps me. I listen to it even when I'm not doing anything, even when I'm not really paying attention. It helps me avoid distractions. And I see the way my Christian life has grown. And it's not by doing anything per se. Mm. And then I always refer back to, I, I just tell myself, it's those things that I've listened to. It couldn't be anything else. Yeah. Even some stuff that I was struggling with, personal mm-hmm. behavioral issues that I was struggling with, it just mm-hmm. went like that without mm-hmm. even much prayer. Mm-hmm. So that's what has, uh, has helped me. Uh, what else? Uh, what else? Okay, I try to read, even though it's getting harder these days because mm. of technology. Yeah. <laughs> Most of the reading I do is on phone, so it's not yeah. easy. Sometimes I have to switch off my data just to read because mm. I, I used to read when I was quite younger. It's mm. getting harder these days, but mm. that's what I do. I, I read a lot too. I read a lot of, uh, I started learning, I started reading some Kenneth Hagen materials mm. because Pastor Project quotes Kenneth Hagen a lot. So <laughs> I'm like, okay, let me even read this general of it that mm. I'm talking about. And it's, it's mind blowing what you find there. So yeah. I read and I listen to the messages. I think that's basically what helps with distraction. Not really good. Yeah. I mean, the word is spirit and it's life. Yeah. I mean, as we keep listening to the word of God, mm. like like you said, you know, it just changes us. Yeah. It yeah. Changes us. It changes us. Mm-hmm. Just to double click on one of the things he said, and I, I find it very, very powerful. And um, I think it was during the course of the week or maybe some, yeah, some, some, I can't remember exactly. So, um, I'm thinking if I should share it or not to share it. Expose yourself like I've done. <laughs> like I've done. Expose yourself. <laughs> so there was there. So I, was, I think I was discussing with my wife some couple of weeks ago, and I was telling her that hmm, some many things have changed though mm-hmm. about you. And she was like, "Yeah," because I remember when we first got married. Um, I used to, you know, want I wanted my wife to do a lot, like. Because at the time when I was getting married, so I was, I was, I had a, an ambition that, oh, you're also going to help me. Mm. You're going to spar me up to as well spiritually. And we're just going to blaze and just mm. <laughs> bomb for kingdom. Christ for the kingdom. <laughs> you know, and then we'll just yeah. be fire against fire. But no, it wasn't like that. It's uh, so disappointing to let you know it wasn't like that. But, you know, so I, I, at some point that began to affect our marriage. And because I had an expectation entry and which was very wrong with me. Mm-hmm. And, you know, so I, you know, and so sometimes I'll, I'll hear my wife listen to some songs. I'll be like, okay. It's not like they're ungodly, but I just find that, you know, these songs are stick with the edifying spirit ones, you know, and over the couple of years, I've, I've and now look at my wife like this mm-hmm. and I see what she listens to. Mm. and i see a prayer life i see a spiritual life and i'm like i left from a place of me i never one day i had an encounter with god and i never said anything about it never 
the moment God corrected me, I never complained, never said anything. And it was, I think it was so that weeks ago, I was not telling, we were just laughing about mm-hmm. it. And I was like, God has a way of doing same things. Mm-hmm. You know, and one of the things he mentioned was, so I found out that she started listening to messages. Yeah. What I was getting her to do was like, was manual. Say, yeah, God is saying, leave her. Me, mm-hmm. I will do the work that you are not doing. So it's not you trying to get her to do more. Mm-hmm. So, and all of a sudden, I just, you know, when I li- when she plays, does her playlist, and maybe when she's doing anything, I, I listen to some things. I listen to her conversations. I'm like, ah, oh boy. This thing <laughs> has, changed. this thing has changed. And yeah. one of the yeah. things that I will attribute that to is worship, and the messages she has been listening to. Mm-hmm. You know, sometimes I'll just find my wife in the middle of the night listening to and I won't say anything. I'll just walk past. Mm-hmm. You know, and so it's very, very key that even in our subconscious, I remember Reverend Dr. Tunde Jordan mm-hmm. at one point said, you know, that whenever he goes to any hotel and they invite him anywhere, when he leaves, he will, he will play music. His wife knows. He will play in the hotel room. Mm-hmm. He'll be playing music when he's praying. He leaves the hotel room. He leaves the music playing. Oh, no. He comes back. The mm. music is still playing because he said the music's are spirit. Mm-hmm. And once he's leaving, he's telling the Holy Spirit, "There's a you are allowed in this atmosphere. When I come back, I also want my spirit to have that yeah. connection. So he says he leaves the music playing every time. And that was very impactful because... I think that changed my mindset in terms of, yeah. you know, the music that I allow, the things, the conversations I allow around my space. So I connected very deeply what he I said understand. about... Yeah. 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 <laughs> Sorry, yeah. uh, also to add, uh, it's something I just started, so it's so lovely, mm-hmm. using um, worship like instrumentals to pray. Oh. I pray longer yeah. as a result of that. Yeah. Yeah. And I yeah. say that because I'm somebody who grew up listening to hip-hop music. Mm. Like a core hip-hop. Mm-hmm. If I tell you my favorite guys is not even any of the new school. <laughs> 90s hip-hop. Yeah. Wu-Tang, yeah. Nas and all those yeah. people. And I, I mean, I'm the youngest in my house so mm. my brother influenced me oh, in that regard. Yeah. But, you know, to see that transformation and now when I pray and I just put, I use my, you know, mm-hmm earpiece and i listen to instrumentals and i pray mm-hmm. it, it helps my spirit it's True. almost like me and the holy spirit is in front of yeah. me i'm looking at his face mm-hmm. and he helps me pray longer it's just music it's powerful powerful, powerful. Yeah, and powerful. i think just listening to you but too for me personally one of my takeaway is to show grace mm. to ourselves mm-hmm. and to show grace to other people yeah because sometimes we feel like oh lord i feel like i'm not perfect or i'm mm-hmm. not up there yet or my spouse or my sibling is not yet up there yeah. mm-hmm. but like you know like, like you said you know just keep praying to god you can indirectly expose them to <laughs> and be an example yeah. and yeah. just show grace to people yeah And so, as we wrap up our conversation with Chooks, you know, we've been talking about music. Mm -hmm. So, Chooks, what's one song you are currently jamming to? And could you sing a line? Oh, no. Please don't do this to me. You got to give us some songs. You have to give us the songs. Come on. You can do all things through Christ. (laughs) Since I got done scripturizing it. You can, but you do. (laughs) You can. You can sing. All all things are lawful. Not all things are high. How is it said now? Don't do this to me. Go, Chooks. Go. Go, Chooks. <laughs> uh, I, I can't sing I can't sing the one I'm currently listening to it, it's so Emperor of the Universe Good, let's Kanda, do it. Don't worry, we have it um, Edems will soon bring out an EP so oh, okay. uh, no no I'm working on it <laughs> he, he was, been, he'll I've, support you I've been working on it for the past four years he you know what I'm saying you. So. don't worry you have <laughs> help you have help you have help <laughs> and I, I think I, that one and another one uh, Bro- uh, Brooke Legatswood mm. I think she's she was one of the singers I don't know if Hill it's Hillsong or better yeah yes. so um, I will exalt you oh my god mm-hmm. I will exalt you yeah you are my God, my hiding place, my safe refuge, my treasure, Lord, you are my friend and king, anointed one, most holy. Did you right? You did well. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, amazing. <laughs> uh, amazing. Like some people don't know the tall and the god. <laughs> nah, just don't worry. Time, time, time. Just- <laughs> we groom your own talent. <laughs> we will groom your own talent. <laughs> I forgive you. I forgive you. 
<laughs> so cheers thank you so much for thank hanging you. out with us today thank we you. are so so we have one fun. last question for you before we let you go okay. one last question <laughs> now the question is so if you were to have one if you were to sit with one person maybe have dinner with them uh who would that person be in the bible no jesus yeah no david yeah <sighs> Who would that person be, and what would you, as a person, serve that person? Ah, what a question! Hmm. What a question! Hmm. No Jesus, no David. No well, it wasn't going to David. be David before, <laughs> and I wasn't going to mention Jesus because that's obvious. Hmm. But I think I will say, oof, I will, I, I will say either of two people. Okay. Come and show on. So I will say it's uh, either Moses hmm. or Solomon. Mm. Moses saw, he literally almost saw God. I think he saw the back of God, mm-hmm. and he had an experience that nobody else yeah. had. You know, he 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 was literally with God for forty days. Yeah, at least forty days. Mm. This is the longest. And so yeah. the question <laughs> I was asking him is, yeah. what exactly were you doing with God those forty uh-huh. days? That's true. <laughs> right. Uh-huh. What exactly? How was it? What was that experience like? What was God saying? Because he was hearing directly the voice of God, mm-hmm. and that's something that I think we wish. We have not that if you don't have it, we're not complete as Christians, mm-hmm. but just to understand what it was like 40 days, just you and God mm. excluded. What were you guys saying? Mm. I want to know that. And then, of course, Solomon as well, because obviously, for his wisdom, yeah. you know, you would Wiser. want to understand how his mind worked, how he was able to administer. He, I think, he was one of the few, I don't know how many, but he didn't fight any wars in Israel. Never did fight wisdom. one. That was wisdom. Mm. Uh, so, just to understand that, because we just look at it, oh, he didn't fight any wars, but. It tells you that if you were a Solomon in today's world, you would know how to work in an office. You know how to manage different personalities. Absolutely. If Absolutely. you were in government, you would know how to be diplomatic. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Maybe there, I mean, if, if there was Solomon today, there won't be, you know, Russia and Ukraine and stuff mm-hmm. like that. You would know how <laughs> yeah. to manage that. You know, how to manage that. you know, so just to understand how those people's mind worked and then Moses, what exactly was he saying? What was God telling him? What was his, that you know, yeah. feeling like? Uh, that's would, something I would like what to What would you serve them? Yeah. What would I serve them? Yeah. Serve them... Is food, food? food okay food ah oh, wow okay, <laughs> we're do that. I'll start about hey. what, what, what protein what protein um bushmint hey. bushmint hey. I'm I'm <laughs> Oh, <laughs> I know Moses would like Mugwabi. Moses, Mugwabi. I know you Maybe. like Mugwabi. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much. It was thank such you. a fun time hanging out with you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you friend. Just, um, um, if okay, so we'd like you to pray for our friends okay. who are listening. Like whatever it is, the Lord lays in your heart. Hmm. Just say word of prayer. Okay, Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day and we also thank you for everybody who is listening or watching from any place in the world. Father, your word is real. Mm -hmm. Your word is truly real. Sometimes we look at it and we think it's just fiction or it's just stories, but your word is real. Mm -hmm. And I pray that you expose the reality of your word to every person watching or listening right now in whatever situation. Whatever it is they are going through, there's always a solution in the world. Father, I pray that you help them grow through your word and in spirit mm-hmm. that they would understand the Rema word of God for the particular situations in their life mm-hmm. and they come out of it victoriously to the glory of your name in Jesus name. Amen. 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 Alright. And to all all our viewers, every one of you, thank you so much for staying with us. We're, we have come to the end of today's show and like you all know how we do it on the inside show. From IDMS Edems, would like to say a very big thank you. Thank you so much. Mm-hmm. Friends, thank you. Um, Chooks, could you share your, your Instagram in case anyone would like to reach? Okay, yes. Yeah, the same thing on Facebook, Instagram, and X. C H E C K S underscore I K E. Chooks Ike. Chooks Ike. And you can connect with him and just, you know, chat up. You guys can from the community 11 <laughs> can recommend you can recommend another first 11 for you <laughs> you know that you can use in any area of your life <laughs> want to say a very big thank you to you and for staying with us all through the show uh till we'll come your way again next week monday mm-hmm. from all of us in the studio we want to say a very big thank you thank you bye bye and have a great day cheers